Uh, hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to give you an upfront heads up warning. I do not know where this video is going to go. Um, I am not, I am a sci-fi nerd. Let me be very upfront with you. I am. I follow NASA on Twitter. Uh, Twitter, not the other name. I watch a lot of science fiction TV shows. I also watch a lot of science documentaries. I know who uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is. I watch his programs. I know who um, uh, the other guy, I forgot his name, in the wheelchair. He died. Stephen Hawking. I know who he is. I read his books, some of them. And Albert Einstein and Plato and Copernicus, you know, etc. I'm not an uber nerd. When it comes to science-y stuff, but my passion in regards to science lies under technology and space travel, astronomy, etc. All things space and anything to do with robots and computers. Am I an expert? Gods, no. No, no, no. Do I have a more than working knowledge of some of this stuff? Yes. I've read enough books, taken enough science classes in college university level courses and watched enough documentaries and read enough articles scientific articles by the way not just wikipedia articles to at least have an above average understanding of space now i'm not able to retain all of this knowledge in my head or at least repackage it in a cohesive way so i might say things that things that might or actually be incorrect due to the fuzzy nature of how my brain works but i'll do my best to be accurate where i can and talk about mars what is mars mars is two things at least two things to humanity one it's a planet not far from ours uh fourth in orbit around the sun from distance from the sun most of the time depending on what time of the year it is and orbits and things sometimes uh mars is closer to earth than other planets and sometimes it's not i believe but i don't know the uh logistics i'm not into astrology that much and my knowledge of astronomy is more on distant things not as much on the solar system Although I know enough about the solar system to at least talk about it briefly at surface level. But for the purposes of our channel, because I'm a general purpose vlog, but also pop culture topics, pretty heavy duty. Um, Mars is also a very popular setting in science fiction books. Mars Attacks, Invaders from Mars, uh, War of the Worlds, um, What's-His-Name-Goes-To-Mars, John Carter, or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, Mars is a pretty common setting in science fiction. So I'm not going to give you the textbook article on Mars. I'm not even going to give you the Wikipedia bullet points. I'm just going to give you a very surface level what I know without actually fact checking. I know Mars is a somewhat smaller planet in diameter than the Earth. It is a much colder planet than the Earth. And Mars does not have a breathable atmosphere uh, to sustain humans or other Earth-like life forms. And to the best of our current scientific knowledge, Mars does not have liquid water on its surface. And speaking of surface, it is radioactive because the sun rays blast it and it does not have an atmosphere or an ozone layer or a magnetic field like Earth does to protect it. So Mars is dangerous. But NASA thinks we can go to Mars someday in the future, so they're sending rovers. Uh, remote control robots. Well, kind of, sort of remote control, but it's more complicated because they kind of have some limited autonomy and artificial intelligence kind of sort of but also they are remote control robots basically to study mars 
We also, whenever we launch satellites that go deep into space to explore other planets, we usually do flybys of Mars and grab extra pictures and data of it. So we've we've studied Mars pretty extensively as a as a species. We don't know a fraction of what there is to know about Mars, but we know more about it than we do most other planets because it's the one we can actually physically visit even though we can't send humans, we can send probes and robots and things like that. Every probe or robot we've ever sent to Venus has died uh, within minutes because the atmosphere there is garbage. Uh, the thunderstorms and the acid rain and everything else. We just have not yet figured out how to build equipment that can survive on Venus for a very long period of time. We were working on it, but we're spending most of our money on Mars because we have a belief, I will say, that we have a more realistic opportunity or chance of actually allegedly colonizing Mars than we do Venus, even though Venus is probably more like Earth and more easier to get to and could be sustainable if we could reverse the, ga the greenhouse gas effect on Venus and cool the atmosphere and make it habitable. Um, we, we're, for whatever reason, we're fixated on Mars. Uh, Mars is sometimes referred to as the red planet, although we now know that uh, NASA doctors the photographs they take of Mars to give it that red tint because of the belief that it's a red planet. Now, Mars is kind of sort of red. It does have red dirt on the surface, and it does have, you know, the same kind of red dirt you'd find in Texas. And its soil is got a lot of copper in it, and it's kind of got that rusty kind of red t tint to it. But it's not the bright red you usually see in photographs. It's more of a dull, like, mid-grade mid between copper and burgundy is what it really looks like whenever, they, whenever NASA gives us unedited photographs. Which they often do on occasion for comparison's sake, you know, for posterity. Because there are conspiracy theorists who go wild every time they find out that NASA doctors photographs. Well, they colorize photographs. They don't, they don't alter the photographs. They just alter the colors of the photographs to make them more pleasing to us, the viewer. So that we keep giving them money, so they keep taking photographs of space. It is what it is. However... We don't really know enough about Mars to really say we know shit about Mars. We know a little bit about its surface and its temperature and atmosphere and stuff like that. Uh, and I say a little bit because our rovers have only explored like a teeny tiny piece of the surface. And our probes have only been able to photograph it from space. We don't really have a full GPS level map of Mars. And we do do not really know, ever, we don't know what's beneath the surface. We have never been beneath the surface of Mars, ever, to this day. We do not have the current technology to get underground. We can kind of get into, like, you know, craters, and we can kind of explore surface-level caves if we find them. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if we've explored caves or not. Have, have we found any caves? Have we explored them? I don't know. But that's the extent of our current technological capability. NASA is working on sending humans to Mars, but they're at least two or three decades away from doing that. Uh, based on the most recent timetable I read, which was uh, about seven or eight years ago, so I don't know if that's changed. Because, you know, priorities change with each administration every time we elect a new president because you know priorities change public opinion changes etc so nasa has to kind of sort of operate independent of the u.s government but also under the you know thumb of the u.s government so they're kind of like well we got to do what we got to do so some years they have more money to work with than other years is all i'm saying um 
that being said, NASA does their best, but they can't throw everything they have at exploring Mars. They also have to explore, you know, the other planets and the rest of the solar system and the asteroid belt and the sun and the moon and Venus, as well as studying, you know, distant, distant galaxies and universes and faraway supernovas and, you know, comets and everything else. So they got a lot on their plate, let's be real. Even if we gave NASA 10,000% of the Earth's entire GDP, we couldn't explore a fraction of our own solar system. We can't. We're a tiny little species on a tiny little planet in a ginormous universe. <coughs> With, let's be real, very primitive technology. You know, advanced for us as a civilization... But primitive on the grand scheme of things, and I'm not talking about, you know, alleged advanced civilizations that may or may not be out there. I'm just talking about with, you know, in relation to what we could theoretically do. We are extremely primitive at this point in time compared to what is theoretically possible for space travel and space exploration. And a lot of that is due to budgetary limitations, and some of it is due to technological limitations, and some of it is due to the laws of physics that just get in the way of us doing what we would like to do, or what some people would like NASA to be able to do, even though it's probably not possible. They still want them to do it anyways because they grew up on Star Trek, and they just can't accept that Star Trek is fiction, and it is not a documentary about our future, although there are some people that would like to believe it is. Um... Human nature suggests that Star Trek is not realistic, even if the technology was. Let's be honest. We'll never live in that society, even if we do develop faster-than-light space travel and interact with other species. We're not going to exist, coexist as humans. We're not. We just, we never are. That's human nature. But that's an aside for another day. Um... I don't really know that much else about Mars. You know, I used to follow Spirit and Opportunity and the other rovers. Uh, but, you know, NASA has kind of brushed them aside for newer projects. And so I haven't, like, you know, kept current. You know, like I said, I follow them on Twitter, but I don't, like, read their, you know, every article they publish. You know. But yeah, I, I, I think Mars is worth exploring, absolutely, investigating. And if we could make it economically viable to develop a functional colony on Mars that could sustain human life to do research and, you know, maybe do some limited terraforming and whatnot, maybe create jobs and let people go live on Mars permanent and trade with Mars back and forth in the in the distant future. That would be pretty awesome. I won't be alive for that. My great-great-grandkids that I'll never have because I don't have kids uh, will, won't be alive for that. But eh, it's fun to think about. You know, the possibilities are endless, as they say. So far as NASA has a, an operating budget and exists as, a, as an entity, I mean, who knows? If the U.S. collapses or gets invaded or a asteroid crashes into you know houston and wipes us out or whatever you know there's a lot of things that could happen but i'm just saying the possibilities are theoretically endless you know and that's pretty cool to think about uh if it were possible to live on mars i would consider it if if it were like feasible as in economically possible and doable and obtainable i would definitely consider it Although I don't know if I would enjoy it, because it would probably be a very crowded, cramped space, and you'd have to have a very specialized career field, which I don't think I would uh, fall under any of those specific um, needs. So I might not, it might not uh, ever happen in my lifetime, and it's not obtainable for me realistically. But it's still fun to think about. That's all I have to say. Stay cool.